Hi, my name is Mark Gatter from tunnelvisionltd.co.uk and thank you for checking out these videos on Adobe InDesign CC, the best layout program ever. If you like the video, then please do check out my website, tunnelvisionltd.co.uk or .com. And on the homepage, you'll find a link to the complete course list, either on Udemy or Skillshare. I, of course, invite you to sign up. And if you like the course, please tell me. And if you've got a question, please contact me and tell me. I will respond. If you've got an idea about something else that you'd like to see a video about, and you tell me and I make a video, I will send you a free coupon to my videos on Udemy or Skillshare. So please check it out. What have you got to lose? So once you've finished your document, how do you successfully output it as a PDF? There are basically two kinds of PDF. There's one that you might want to put on a website or alternatively send it to somebody so that they could approve your work so far. And then there's another that will be high resolution for commercial printing. So if you want to do it for a website or for somebody else to approve, that's going to be RGB. Especially if they want to approve it, they might want to print it as well. So we're going to make it high enough resolution to print and if it's going to print on a desktop kind of printer, like desktop laser, inkjet machine, those, even though they only print using CMYK toner or ink, can only understand incoming RGB information, which is pretty silly. But most people don't have Photoshop, so we have to allow for that. So that kind of PDF is going to output as RGB. The one for commercial printing, on the other hand, is going to output high-res CMYK. And the hope is, always, that that document is finished and won't require additional editing, because PDFs are a nightmare to edit, and you're almost always better off <coughs> and, you're almo and you're almost always better off going back to the original document and fixing that and then outputting it again than trying to edit a PDF. Anyway, here we go. We'll do the RGB one first. So you go to the file. So you go up to the File menu and down to Export. And then you've got to tell it where you want to put it. So I've already put it, I've already created a folder called Outputting as a PDF. And there's my InDesign document. This is the one I've got open. And I'm going to put the PDF in the same place. So I'm going to call this one Balloons RGB. And then down here you choose Adobe PDF Interactive. Now there is nothing interactive in this document, but the interactive preset guarantees RGB output. So now I'll click Save, and there is the Export to Interactive PDF window. And the General tab allows me to do the General tab allows me to say whether I want pages or spreads. I usually choose pages because if this is going to appear on screen, a two-page spread will mean that each page is only half the size. So I usually choose Pages. View Fit Page. That means it's going to fit in the window, and it won't appear super large, and you have to reduce it, stuff like that. Default layout is fine. View After Exporting. That's great. Then we don't have to go find it. And actually, there's really nothing else in here that I need to worry about. So let's go to Compression. Compression is how your images are going to be dealt with, anything made of pixels. JPEG quality, maximum. Try to avoid using any of the others. Maximum is your best bet. Resolution, PPI, pixels per inch. And if I click on this arrow, there are four magic numbers there. 72 and 96 relate to websites. 72 is the resolution of old Mac screens. Things have moved on. Most desktop machines now are 96. 144 is pretty much the maximum resolution that laser printers, desktop ink jets can deal with. I mean, you can give them more, but you won't get any more detail in the output. So if you want someone to be able to print it, choose 144. 300 would only be used for commercial printing, and I don't use RGB interactive exports for that. And I don't use RGB interactive exports for commercial printing. Then click on Advanced. The good news is you don't need to do anything in this window at all. Security. 
I recommend against password protecting your files because it's just another thing that everyone's got to remember and it might mean that you lose and it might mean that you miss your deadline or irritate somebody you don't want to irritate. So whenever you can, don't password protect it. Now I'm going to click export and in a few seconds your PDF should appear. And there it is. It's a two-page PDF, and on page two, I've just got a bit of text, rubbish text as usual. I can zoom into this a lot. Still looks good, doesn't it? Text is vector. It's not made up of pixels. Vector is supported when you make a PDF, and because there are no pixels, there's no sort of step, step, step edges to things. It's sharp and crisp and clean, no matter, even if you zoom in to 1600%. Look at that. It's still sharp and crisp and clean. It's great. So type will be fine no matter what. The same thing can't be said of images, but if you've chosen 144, the resolution here is going to be pretty good. And as you can see, the quality is great. So thanks again for stopping by, and I hope that video was really helpful to you. And please do check out my website, www.tunnelvisionltd.co.uk, and let me know what you thought. Bye for now.